Let's try this problem. Start by writing down uh, your axes, indicating the positive directions. Now I need to draw a right triangle that will show the components and the overall vector. Uh, I can start by showing the x component, or I can start by showing the y component. Whichever you like. On this problem, I feel like starting with the x component. So let's start with the x component. Which way is the x component pointing? Uh, well, the positive direction is left, but the x component is negative, so it's pointing to the right. If positive is left and you're negative, then you're pointing to the right. Always be very careful to get your arrows correct and be careful with your positive directions. Left is positive and the component is negative, so it's pointing to the right. Then we have our y component. Which direction is the y component pointing in? Well, down is positive, but the component is negative, so the component is pointing up. If down is positive and the component is negative, then it's pointing up. Now we have to draw the overall vector. Well, the overall vector should begin at our initial point here and end up at this final point. This is the initial point because this is where the x component was pointing away from. And this is the final point because this is what the y component was pointing towards. We need to find the magnitude of that overall vector. That's not good enough. The question was asking about the vector as a whole, indicated by the arrow, so we also need its direction. A good way to find the direction is to find the angle at its tail. I hope you're in the habit now of using question marks to indicate what the question is asking you for. So we should find this angle, and we have to give the angle a name, so let's call it theta. We really have to give the angle a name in order to figure it out, so let's call it theta. Let's use asterisks to indicate that these were the components we were given. And this asterisk doesn't indicate that the angle was given, it indicates that we've decided to focus on this angle. We know two sides, so to find the third side we can use Pythagorean theorem. We don't need a trig function to find the third side if we know two sides. As usual, I'm going to start by writing the general formula. Uh, that way I, avo I avoid careless mistakes. Our symbol for the hypotenuse is v. One of the legs is 9, the other leg is 4. No need to plug in signs, because these are lengths. We should not plug in signs. 9 squared plus 4 squared. What is that? 97. To get rid of this square, we need to do the opposite, which is to take the square root. But if we're going to take the square root of the left, we have to take the square root of the right. Taking the square root of something that's squared just takes you back to the original quantity. And the square root of 97 is 9.8. I indicated we're taking positive square roots uh, because we're dealing with lengths, which are positive. But we don't actually have to put a positive sign on this final answer. In fact, we shouldn't, because lengths are always positive. So it would be pointless to point out that it's positive. Always a good idea when you figure stuff out to build that information into your sketch. Now we're not done unless we also have a way of indicating the direction of this vector. And a good way to indicate the direction is the angle. That's one of the main points you should be taking from these problems. The way to indicate the direction of a vector usually is to indicate an angle that the vector is forming. We're going to use the signs, the components that we were originally given. Well, we were given the opposite and adjacent sides, which leads us to use the tangent, TOA. Tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. You could use sine or cosine now because we do know the hypotenuse, but we didn't know the hypotenuse originally, so it's more usual to use the tangent. The length of the opposite side is 4, and the length of the adjacent side is 9. Don't plug in signed numbers for this step. You can get answers that are misleading if you plug in signed numbers when you're dealing with trig functions. 
This is the length of the opposite side and the length of the adjacent side. So we have to deal with the unsigned numbers. That really is one of the, the peskiest details in physics, getting the signs correct and knowing when you should pay attention to the signs and when you shouldn't. Uh, and the only real way to get a feel for that is doing lots of different types of problems and learning how to pay attention to the signs and also learning when you should drop the signs. It takes practice. To get the theta by itself, we have to remove the tangent by doing the opposite and taking the inverse tangent. But if we're going to take the inverse tangent of the left, algebra says we must take the inverse tangent of the right. Inverse tangent of 4 ninths. Well, the inverse tangent of a tangent of a variable is just the original variable. And then we'll use our calculator to find the inverse tangent of 4 ninths. 24 degrees. Now, it's important to tell the reader where this 24 degrees is. One way you could do that is just draw this picture and label the 24 degrees, and then they know where the angle is. But if you don't want to include a picture, you have to say that the vector is forming an angle of 24 degrees above the negative x-axis. 24 degrees above the negative x-axis. Let's take that apart. You can see that this side of the triangle here is pointing in the direction of the negative x-axis, right? This component is pointing in the direction of the negative x-axis, and clearly this angle is above the negative x-axis. So in words, we're pointing in a direction 24 degrees above the negative x-axis. Or if you don't like using all those words, just draw the picture and then label the angle, and then people will know what you're talking about. Once again, I want to remind you that there's another angle that you could have come up with. When I drew this triangle, I drew the x component first, and then I drew the y component. But if I had felt like it, I could have drawn the y component first. And then I could have drawn the x component. That would give us the same overall vector as before, but now it would have been natural to focus on this angle, because this is the angle in this new triangle. Uh, well, it should be pretty obvious that the angle you would have calculated here would have been 66, right? Because 66 plus 24 is 90 degrees, right? Uh, 70, yeah. Okay. Um, so if you had drawn this triangle, then you would have ended up identifying this angle. How would you describe this angle in words? Maybe pause the video and see if you can describe this angle in words. Well, is this an angle that's formed with the y-axis or with the x-axis? I hope you can see that this angle is bounded by the y-axis, not the x-axis. And is it bounded by the positive y-axis or by the negative x-axis? Well, positive is down, and this component is pointing up. So this angle is bounded by the negative y-axis. And is this angle to the right or to the left of the negative y-axis? Well, obviously, it's to the left. So we could say that the vector is pointing in a direction 66 degrees to the left, of the negative y-axis, 66 degrees to the left of the negative y-axis. Notice it wouldn't make any sense to use the word above or below here. You can't be above or below the y-axis. You can only be to the right or to the left of it. Again, if you're uncomfortable with all those words, just draw a picture for your reader and label the angle you're focusing on. Uh, but it's not that hard to learn how to describe the angle correctly in words. Maybe that's something that you should also be working on as you're working through these videos.